Welcome to Cognitive Psychology and Sailor Lecturer Angela and de Monteverde. Same reading list that you have on your end, which is the Robert Sternberg and Karen Sternberg's Cognitive Psychology 6 edition. So we're going to talk about for this topic, number 3, 4 is the visual and perception. Okay, so we have to see first what perception is. So perception is the set of processes by which we recognize, organize, and make sense of the sensation we receive from environmental stimuli. Alright, so I'll give you a scenario. Example that you are um, outside of something or you're, you are in a certain scenario. And then, even though that you are not with that exact place, um, you perceive something like, ah, parang alala ko yung grandma ko. Ah, okay, I miss something because of this one recognizes nung kasama ko pa yung tao na yun, yung bagay na yun, or yung pangyayari na yun, or yung lugar na yun. And bigla tayo may naaalala, diba? It's because of, in line to perception, I, we tend to process and organize um, each picture or event that was happened to us and relate that was to our senses. Kasi nga, um, may, na, may, maaring may naamoy tayo, parang may masasabi tayo na, alam, naalala ko bigla si ganito kasi naamoy ko yung pabango niya, something like that. Diba? So, that's what we call perception, an example of perception. Okay? Um, perception encompasses many psychological phenomena, like um, the experiences that we had. Um, there are times that we remember something happened to us when we were a kid, right? Because of we perceived something that could remind us nung bata pa tayo. Okay? So, we have also perceptual continuum. Okay? So, these modalities are the five senses. Okay, so five senses of sight of vision of sight, auditory for sound, uh, olfactory for smell, um, gustation taste, and also touch. And these are the digital objects. All right, so um, for us to be able to see a grandma's face, we have our um, vision of sight. Okay, for us to be able to uh, hear if there is a falling tree, we have an auditory. Um, Aud um, auditory um, addition of sound rather okay for us to be able to smell the digital ob object of bacon we have also the modality or the senses of smell and so on for ice cream is the taste and computer keyboard is we have to sense by using our touch okay so information um, informational medium for this one would reflect of, as a basis of the grandma's face. So, it is not that just happen uh, when we see our grandma's face, um, we remind, uh, it reminds something like, um, uh, example would be, for this would be, okay, so, we, um, previous lesson, meron tayong tiyatawag na electrode, okay, na nilalagay as part of the brain. Okay, so if we see something this is stimuli, ang mangyayari nun, our brain become activated in which or in we, which side na nagre-reflect nun sa electrodes na yan, sa ERP, right? And also, example would be the sound. Okay, nag-generate yung falling tree by um, as a sound waves, kaya natin yun naririnig. And nakakapaglabas ang bacon ng isang molecules na kung saan ay naamoy natin yung isang bacon na naniluto. Ice cream na paglabas din also ng molecules sa air kung saan ay uh, nat natitaste natin yung something. Okay? Both release into air and dissolve in water just like an ice cream. And for touch, mechanical pressure and vibration at the point of contact between the surface of the skin and the keyboard. So these are what um, informational medium that happens because of the digital objects and because of modality. And for this sense, um, there are um, stimulations na nangyayari. Okay? Like um, sa vision of light or sa sense of sight. Um, kaya kailangan natin ng photon of the light for us to be able to see something or the face of the grandmother and reflects to the grand face. Okay, you may post this one on your end and see or read your handouts for the explanation for this one also. All right, so next would be, um, we have here the Dalen scout. 
Okay, so perception, it is the mental representation of a uh, stimulus that is perceived. Okay, so without without this kind of perception, um, we're unable to recognize things. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, um, it's the mental represent representation of stimulus that is we perceive. Okay, without such percept of the how, you could not meaningly grasp what you previously have sensed. Okay, so we have, um, for us to be able to know that, oh, okay, this is a cow. We have a um, um, recent representation of what cow looks like before we perceive this one. So that is the example of Dallin's cows, um, Dallin Bach's cow. Next also, some of you has different um, representation of this. So this is what we call the elusive triangle or real or illusion. So with this part, um, you easily can see the triangles in this figure, right? Um, we have here triangle on this end, so it signifies a triangle or a one or just a one triangle only. So is it just an illusion? So those are the things. It's because of we tend to see something not by um, mm, looking a picture in depth, but to um, a representation of what we previously known. Okay, so um, from the um, okay, let's go back here. All right, so sometimes we perceive what is not there. Okay, minsan makikita natin ah, parang hindi naman to cow. It doesn't look like a cow. Okay, ay parang hindi naman to triangle because it may be something, we perceive something not a triangle but we tend to focus on the circles. Okay, um, so sometimes we perceive what is not there. Other times we do not perceive what is there. And at still other times we perceive what cannot be there. Okay, so maybe some other people might see this one as a cat or a grass, or something else, okay? So the existence of um, perceptual illusion suggested that what we sense in our, using our sensory organs is not necessarily what we perceive in our mind, okay? So our mind must be taking the available sensory information and manipulating that information somehow to create mental representation of objects, properties and a spatial relationship within our environment okay so the way we represent objects will depend in our own viewpoint in perceiving the objects okay that is simple as that so how it goes um from the sensation to perception so the simple act of interpreting the sound very Vibration is eating your ears as someone's calling your name, okay? So, it is a complex by process involving both the senses organs and the brain. So, the sense organs transform information from the physical form, okay? Just like, um, such as light or sound waves or chemicals. So, into our nerve impulse and transmit it to the brain, which organize the information, interprets it, and when initiates its response, just just like what happened on this picture. So we have to see first the um, information from the outside world. We might see um, a rain, a sound of a rain or a lightning from the thunder. Okay, so um, from that um, sensation, we gather our raw data like, um, okay, these are the sounds. Okay, it will signifies or symbolizes as rain. If this is a light, okay, so there are photons that is coming into my retina and that is, that will be, photons will be a raw data of how we'll be able to send something, okay? So, um, these receptors that we have to use for us to be able to perceive are eyes, ears, nose, skin, and tongue, or the five senses that we are talking about earlier or that I was talking about earlier. Okay, so what is now the perception? Um, perception tries to interpret the raw data. And it gives a signal to our brain, uh, to our spinal cord, and transmit the information to our brain for us to be able to recognize things. Okay, so sens sensation 
basically, it is a physical process that stimulate of our sense orgasm by features of the outer world. Okay, so that's what we perceive or nag stimulate sa atin kung ano na nangyari dun sa outer world. However, um, perception naman is a psychological process because this is um, this is re responsible to organize what we perceive outside world. Okay, kung ano natin nakita, sensation, it's coming from our five senses, and perception is how we interpret things based on what we said. So that is the difference between sensation and perception. Okay? So the deepest layer of the cells where process of light energy begins is made out of photoreceptors. All right, so... Um, all right. So we have here rods and we have two kinds of photoreceptors, um, which is rods. Rods is a photoreceptor that function in low illumination and play a key role in night vision or a dark adaptation responsive to the dark and light contrast. So there are times that when we are trying to... Um, Um, sometimes we have this instance that um, when we came outside or galing tayo sa maliwanag and then we tend to go on a dark place. Wala tayong makita. But after 5 minutes or 3 minutes, bigla na lang tayong um, nakikita. Nakakita kahit na madilim. Even that galing tayo sa isang maliwanag na lugar. How is that supposed to work? It's because of the runs. Okay. Um, the photoreceptor that came from the rats, which is the dark adaptation. We, as a human being, tend to adapt, uh, our eyes tend to adapt depending on the place na the perceive natin or the photoreceptors that we have. Next will be cones. Cones are the photoreceptors that are responsible for color vision and are most functional condition of bright light. Okay, so um, this will also explain for visual acuity or our ability to see clearly depends on our cones. Okay, so here's the thing. What is these cones about? Cones is a photoreceptor that tends to see something differently. Okay, so we tend to see the um, the color of blue as a light blue, turkey, and other kind of blue. Maybe it's sky blue. Okay, so it depends on our cones that we have in our ear, uh, in our eyes. Kung paano natin ma-perceive yung ganong kulay na yon. So, meaning to say, um, it depends the color of something depending on the cones that you have um, in, in you. Okay? Okay, so to sum, it, uh, um, sum this one up, um, photoreceptors allows us to convert the perception that we allow us to see and convert into a uh, perception. Okay, perception in a sense of neural perception in which what we see will be converted into um, neural perception, meaning to say, na convert neto yung in, yung mga um, na perceive natin into an information at nag integrate sa brain okay so that photoreceptor is part of the eye also and to sum it up as well um, there are two kinds of photoreceptors which is the first is the rods okay ang ginagawa ni rods ay i Ilo yung illumination na nagpa-play sa atin para makakita tayo sa gabi. Si cones naman ay i-allow sa atin or i-allow tayo na makakita ng certain colors certain colors every time na nakakita tayo ng isang stimulus. Okay, hope that one is clear. If you still have question, you may still ask me during synchronous. Okay? So, paano nga ba na um, paano nga ba um, nag-work 
ang isang vision. Okay, so we have here the objects. Okay, so we have here um, parts of the eye. We have pupil, cornea, iris, and lens. So, um, in line to that one, ang image talaga na nakikita natin is that this kind of thing. However, once this image entered to our eye, baligtad siya. But because of the neural uh, nerves na meron tayo and the integration na meron tayo in our cognitive of the brain, hindi naging baligtad ang pagtingin natin sa isang bagay. Even that, it reflects into uh, in a different kind of way. Okay, so this kind of butterfly ay kabaligtan siya ng na, na intersect sa atin ng mata natin. Okay, so because of our cognitive functioning and neural um, functions, nagiging tama ang tingin natin sa isang object. Okay, the way we look at things. Alright, so that is the summary. And for the description of this iris, cornea, pupil, and also other the lens, okay, the retina, the fovea, and optic nerve, you may read your handouts as well. Okay, so what happens to that one? Once it enters the information or the light to, uh, um, sa ating mga mata, uh, mangyayari niyan ay dadali yan dito sa optic nerve at isi-send back na ito kung ano nakita ng ating mata sa isang image, okay, by the use of blind spot. Okay, dyan mag -e enter yun lahat. So, from this end, since that um, we gather the information depending to which one, is it cone or rod, okay, ay papapunta dito and so on till blind spot. And for the description, you may also read your handouts regarding on that one, okay? And that is a very brief um, explanation for the parts of the eye. Okay, so let's move forward to vision and brain. So the eye is where we see visual information and brain is where we make sense to perceive visual information. Alright, so by but making sense of the perceiving of the neural information from the eye, it involves many different acts of perception like color, motion, depth, size, and patterns, among others. So we have to tackle this everything. And also, apart from that, let's go to vision and brain. So we have contralateral. When we see contralateral, yun yung um, sa previous lesson, na kapag yung right hand natin is piagalaw natin, ang nagpa-function doon is the left hemisphere part of the brain, and the one who is responsible is the corpus callosum. However, um, in line to to this eye function and eye part, parts of the eye natin and how it is related to our brain, here's the thing. When the information arrives at the brain, the optic nerve carries impulses to the thalamus, okay? Which means um, thalamus are relaying centers, okay? And because of that thalamus, um, then the, to the visual cortex of the occipital lobes, Ang gagawin ay occipital lobes, which is yun ang dito ng part nato. It siya ang nagpaprocess ng information para makita natin or maintindihan natin kung ano yung nakikita natin by seeing or by using our eyes. We also have the optic chiasm. Okay, so the point at which strands of the optic nerve from the half of each eye cross over to the opposite of the side of the brain. So with this picture, the optic chiasm for that one is this one. Okay, so this line is the um, optic chiasm. Okay, so ja, because of that optic chiasm, ay mas naiintindihan natin yung isang bagay what, based on what we, we see and what we also perceive. Okay? Next would be perceiving um, visual stimuli. So the eye is where we sense visual information and then the brain is where we make sense of it, just what I was saying earlier, but making sense perceiving of neural information from the eye involves many different acts of perception, color, motion, depth, size, and patterns. Okay, same with the one that na meron tayo sa slide na, that I have explained earlier. Okay, bumalik siya. Okay, so perceiving color. Color is not property of objects. However, it is the property of us. Meaning to say, it depends on the 
um, neural information that we have kung paano natin mapaperceive yung color. That is why some people are color blind. We have to tackle that one as well. Okay, some may see that the color is um, dark blue. However, even that the color is light blue. Okay, so it's not a matter of how the, mm, what color we perceive is. It's a matter of how our mind or our cognitive functioning reflect to that color. Okay, next would be our perception of color depends on the protoreceptors. Just I was saying earlier, protoreceptors is a part of the eye which um, transforms information in, because of the cons and the rods, right? Our brains and the physical characteristics of the stimulus we look at. Okay, we also have primates. We humans included have three kinds of cones. Okay, so those that are sensitive to green, blue, wavelengths of light or what we call um, trichromatic. We people tend to see the green, blue, and also that kind of wavelength. Ibig sabihin ay that is our primary color, color na napaperceive natin as a human being. Okay? So we are a trichromatic color type of person. Okay, so all mammals other than primates are sensitive to only two pigments. Okay, that is they are dichromatic, just other animal. But there are some who are um, tetrachromatic, which is for fishes and birds. Okay, mas um, sensitive yung eyes nila to a different colors than human. Okay, and next we have theories of color and vision. So, trichromatic color theory, all color that we experience is sold from a mixing three colors, like red, green, and blue. That's why we have pink and other type of colors is because of these three colors that we have, the red, green, and blue. And it does not, however, it does not explain after images. So, what is that after images? These after images are when we look at the picture, um, kapag pinapatay natin yung TV, there is an image that we still see even though the TV is already turned off, right? And also, that is one of the reason why also since that yung mga surgeon ay nag, um, nagsusuot ng mga color na kung saan ay different, di ba? Nakika, nakakita tayo ng mga surgeon, they, sometimes they wear pink, they wear yellow. Why is that? It's because of... Um, um, or, I mean, they wear um, green or white color suit in operation. It's because of their eyes are too much tired with the color of red. And to make that one balance, what they have to do is to wear something para hindi maging tired yung eyes nila kapag sila ay nag operate Okay? So, surgeon wear green, white color to suit in operation. So, alright. So, next page would be the opponent process theory. It says here that um, the theory that color vision results from the cones linked together in three pairs of opposing colors so that activation of one member of pair inhibits activity in the other. Okay, so cones are linked together with three opposing colors. Pair is linked to blue, uh, sorry, blue is linked to yellow, red is to green, and black is to white. Okay, so... Kaya, just I was saying earlier, na ang mga doctor, para hindi maging tired yung eyes nila, they, sometimes they wear green or or white to contrast of what they seen habang nag-operate. Okay? Next with this one. I want you to look at, at this picture maybe around 30 seconds to 5 minutes for this picture. And let us see of what is happening um, with your vision in line to this picture. Okay. Alright, so if you try to look at the image at uh, enough time for your eyes to get tired and you may see this one. 
even that is the same example as what I was saying earlier. Okay, it's because of um, your cones are too much tied with the object, and it, that is explains also the after image and the um, opponent theory effect. Okay, even though that there is no picture already on the screen, there is an after image that you have seen on your end okay and that explain let me repeat the opponent theory okay now let's look on the um, deficiencies in color vision okay so it says here that only 10 percent of the people um people um 10 about 10 people in a million rather actually fail to see color at all okay according to goldstein 2017 so what we what we have is the color blindness it refers to the weakness or deficiency in the perception of certain colors okay so meaning to say what they see is different from the normal v this will be the example of normal vision and this is the only color na mga nasisi na mga color blinded blindness um people and that is responsible for their cone next would be the perceiving on motion okay so we perceive movement when an image moves across the retina okay and there are two factors contributed to how we perceive movement okay the ba the background we the background against which an object moves and the size of the object so um this is what we call the um apparent motion this is an example of apparent motion even that literally or technically speaking the image doesn't move however it looks move it's because of the um image the structure that's why it is moving okay so that is the apparent motion and which means we can also be fooled into thinking something's moving moving when it is not all right and we also have perceiving depth okay so we have here um, molecular depth cues okay so molecular depth cues it's to the perception that do not require two eyes okay so because there is also a theory that um saying that a person was um if they do not have or they're not unable to use their eyes ng dalawa ay hindi sila nakakakita ng maayos so we have here First is the linear. Okay, so paano natin masasabi na ang um, isang bagay ay perceiving into depth? Okay, na yung isa ay malayo, yung isa ay malapit. Okay, so may iba't ibang bagay tayo doon na tinatawag. Okay, we have linear. We also have the texture. And we also have Okay, we, ha we have linear perspective, we have texture gradient, we have atmospheric perspective and interposition. Okay, so um, what about ngayon kung ang sinasabi na people who wasn't able to have or to use their two eyes ay hindi nakakita ng maayos. Okay, because there is a theory to that ngayon sinabi ko kanina. So we have um, different kind of perspective. We have linear perspective. If something looks large in front of you, but it looks smaller as it goes further away from you. Okay, so that is the linear perspective. And that is why you know something is far and something is near. Okay, we also have the texture gradient. So you can see the details in front of you, but as they go further, you tend to see they tend to clump up together. Okay, and we also have atmospheric perspective something is far from you but tend to be blurry when they are far okay and interposition it is says there that is when an object overlaps with one another the object being covered is perceived as being farther away even though that they are not really farther away we also have all um, optical illusion so illusions caused by a visual system and characters by visual per percept that arguably appears to different from reality. 
Okay, Sam says that this is smaller than this one, even though that all of these angles are um, as the same or have the same size only. This may be look so big than to this one, even that both of this one has the same um, shapes only and same length. Okay, and that's what we call the optical illusion. Next would be the uh, horizon illusion. Okay, sometimes we tend to see bigger objects if they are more closer to the horizons. That is why it looks um, bigger than to this one because of this is much closer to the horizon. We also have this kind of image. Um, sometimes we tend to see bigger objects if they are farther from us. So that is the different kind of image in regards to um, in regards to optical illusion. Okay, and next we have also perceiving size and shape. We also know that when things change position or distance in relation to us, they remain the same. Okay, so the image on our retinas change shape and size as objects move through the space. And that is what we call the perceptual concept constancy. Okay, it is the ability of the brain to, pers to preserve perception of objects in spite of changes of retinal dummy image when an object changes in position or distance from the viewer. And this is an example of perceptual constancy. Okay, now, um, the ability of the brain to preserve perception of objects in spite of the changes in the retinal image when an object changes in the position or distance from the viewer. So even though that both of these um, girl and boy has the same size, this is looks for um, bigger than to this one because of the changes position that they have in common on this. Okay. So for this one again explains that um, the boy looks smaller if um, he is standing um, far from the camera or from our perspective. That is why he looks smaller than to this girl because of he, um, she is standing or this lady is standing near to our eyes. That's why she looks bigger. So that's why the perceiving of size and shapes. Okay. And next would be, we have the perceiving patterns and walls, and walls, rather. Okay, so gestalt is a German word that means for or pattern or a shape. So gestalt researchers Max Wurtenberg, Kortkofa, and Wolfgang Holler. Okay. So um, they are the ones who is responsible. So meaning to say, um, what Geshat means is to look the wool shape than to a smaller shape. Okay. Okay. So the first um, Geshat principle that we want to recall is the law of similarity. Okay. So a Geshat law that says we tend to group like objects together in visual perception. Okay. So, what is this law of similarity? Um, on this picture, um, when I um, flash the screen to you, um, you tend to see two different colors only, but without even thinking how many circles that we have on this side. So, that's what we call law of similarity. It's because of um, we have two different co colors who are similar to each other. Okay, so what other Gestalt principles that we have? We also have the law of closure. Okay, so the tendency to perceive a whole object in the absence of complete information. So, meaning, okay, so we might see that this one is a size or shape of a circle, this one is triangle, you may see this one as a triangle also even though that there are circles around to this triangle and this may be the um a look of or a picture of a duck okay so we in law of closure we tend to perceive object 
um, depending on, even though that this is not complete, all of this has blanks, right? Um, we tend to um, perceive the whole object depending on how they are close to an object that we have already registered in our in, or in our mind. Next would be the figure. It is a, a specific object in front of an unformed background. Okay, so just like w what I told you earlier, your perceptual um, set or how you have framed your mind will depend on how you perceive things. So you might um, see this one as a glass, okay, or just like a chamber, and you might also perceive this one as a picture of a two um, faces in front of you. Okay, that's what we call the figure or the specific object in front of an unformed background. And we also have the ground, the background behind objects or the figure. So this picture has two explanations. The um, figure and also the ground. So, the interpretation that we have to create on this picture will depend on what is already registered um, inside of our brain. Okay, that's why we perceive this one as a figure of this one or we're going to perce perceive this one as a background of um, these two faces. All right. Okay. So, all right. So next would be the hearing. Okay. So hearing is just as vision starts when we sense light waves. Hearing begins when we sense sound waves. Okay. Okay. So without the sound waves, we are unable to hear things. Okay. However, um, unlike the light waves, okay, this is much slower in line to the traveling of as a medium or the information and can be registered to our brain. Okay, sound waves travel much, much, uh, much more slower rather than light waves, which is why you hear thunder after you have seen the lightning. Okay, and we also have the perception of the ear or ears. So our ears have little to do with hearing itself. And this ear has three parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. So um, this external structure called pinnae collects the funnel sounds into the passage called the auditory canal. Okay, so sound vibrations travel to the eardrum or what we call the tym um, tympanic membrane. Okay. Next is the middle ear. The sound waves on the tympanic membrane set into motions the bones of the middle ear or the hammer and anvil with stirrup. So the role of this hammer, anvil, and stirrup is to amplify the sounds okay, so that they have much more energy when they had entering to our the ear. And now it enters the inner ear. Okay, and what is now this structure of inner ear? So this is the inner ear. So the semi-circular um, canals play a key role in maintaining a sense of balance. Okay, we also have um, cochlea, um, which means a bony tube of the inner ear, which is curved like snail shell and filled with fluid. Okay, so can you take a Look at the picture and check where the cochlea is. Okay, so the primitive corner is inside of the cochlea. We have the basilar member or a member that runs through the cochlea for here itself. Okay, so the um technically in basic um basic and then the one is registered as just from the information and registered to our cognitive so that we should identify what kind of 
sound that we are hearing for the specific scenario when we hear sound. Okay? So, the vascular membrane um, sends information to our neural cognitive um, information that we have. Next, we have the body sense. Okay? It is the largest contact uh, largest contact surface area in any sensory input has with our body system, okay? And we all know that, okay? And we have the bodily senses. It's the sense this in between the body or any membrane surfaces, and we also sense things inside our body. There are at least six distinct bodily or somatic senses. The fat, temperature, pain, position, motion, balance, and internal or it allows us to experience many body sensations such as um, rolling stomach, dry mouth, pants, muscle, and breathing heart. So that's what is interoception means. Okay, and we also have the mechanoreception. Okay, that's us. So the top layer of the skin have the separate cells that are sensitive to different factor quality. You have fewer mechanoreceptors on the soles of your feet than on your single feet. So meaning to say that is why we must um sense if somebody else touching our um fingertips than when we before we feel or than to other people you feel the minute that um, sa kanyang feet. So, kasi mas madami ang uh, mechanoreceptors ng fingertips na dan sa our feet. And when something touches our fingertips, forearm, or shoulder, uh, the disputed region for cortex becomes active. So, meaning to say, um, eh, when somebody tries our uh, forearm, shoulder, and the fingertips, it sends more information to our cortex area. That we see, ah, uh, may nagtatas pala siya. Or we sense that may nagtatas siya. Kasi mas madami ang mechanoreceptors sa for a uh, fingertip shoulder na region, uh, na part of the body na. We also have tactile sensations from our skin travel via sensory nerves to the spinal cord and up to the brain. Okay? And we have the first major structure involved in processing body sensation of the thalamus, which relates to impulses of somatic sensory cortex in the parietal space. Okay, so um, uh, as a look up what thalamus is, we might um, want to review the uh, cognitive neuroscience that we discussed on the previous slide, what thalamus is for. Okay, next would be pain so we define pain as a complex emotional and sensory experience okay this pain is associated to actual and potential tissue damage and there are some people who experience phantom limb pain wherein the only they already lost an arm or the leg and they continue to feel pain with that loss of limb okay so may mga tao na even though na naputulan sa sila ng limb and ng leg they still sense the pain doon sa part na naputol sa kanila okay and that's a surprising discovery in the history of neuropsychology. Okay? Also, pain is not just the direct result of tissue damage, but an experience of the brain as well. Alright? So, we have here the pain perception. So, um, we have what we call the nociceptive pain or pain from the skin and or tissue damage or injury. So, this is the partial list of the brain structure activated by skin-based pain. They include thalamus, hypothalamus, limbic system, insula, and the anterior cingulate cortex. Some of the same brain regions and neurochemicals activated when we also experience physical pain are also activated 
during emotional pain. That's why experiencing emotional pain is just like experiencing physical pain. That's why we have experiencing emotional setbacks. Okay? So, meaning to say that the pain that we've experienced in emotion and physical pain that we experience has the same effect also on what pain is that is why we feel um hurt when we when somebody tries to hit us emotionally okay especially the brain regions activate in both physical and emotional pain are the anterior cingulate cortex and the insula so they are highly involved with perception of pain these are the same brain regions that are activated when we observe someone getting hurt. So they are not only activated when we are hurt, they are also activated when we are looking at someone getting hurt. Okay, so um, when we see someone getting hurt, um, we tend to feel that we are hurt also because of nociceptive pain. Okay, um, but there are um, people who bored without the ability to experience the pain also do not get experience pain when others get hurt. Okay? So, may mga tao na hindi nakakaramdam ng pain even though na um, sasaktan na sila. And that is innate to them. Next would be the chemical senses, smell, and Oh, okay, this will be the brain region that I was saying earlier regarding to the anterior cingulate cortex. Okay, and the next one is the chemical senses smell and taste. So, smell and taste are chemical senses because they respond to contact with molecules from objects we encounter in the world. So, unlike receptors for other senses, receptors for chemical molecules are regularly replaced every few weeks. Okay, so next would be, let's talk about the smell or olfaction, which is assigned for olfactory gland, okay? There are, olfax, there are um, olfactory sensory neurons, okay? And the sensory receptors for the smell that reside high up inside the nose. So, contain hair-like projections called cilia, okay? And when chemicals come... In contact with the cilia, transduction of course and the olfactory messages travels to the olfactory bulb in the forebrain. Primary olfactory area are the temporal lobe and the secondary factory area is the frontal lobe. Okay, and next would be the taste, okay? That the texture structures in the tongue called palpili. It contains about 10,000 taste buds, dozens, dozens of taste buds receptor cells on each bud process taste information. Okay, there is increasing evidence that a sixth taste quality fattiness may exist as well. So both smell and taste are involved in the experience of behavior. So, um... Here's the thing. Before, when we were a kid, we um, studied the different um, taste buds. On the, uh, I'm not sure regarding this, but the tip of the tongue will be for the sweet, um, sweet taste bud, and there is also for sour taste bud, and so on and so forth. Right? But we already have now or uh, discovered what we call the papillae. So the papillae is the 10,000 taste buds that is assigned to our body or to our tongue so that um meaning to say there is no specific area only responsible for sleep because of the papillae okay so um that is obsolete today the information regarding to our tongue and also, apart from that, both smell and taste are involved in the experience of labor. So that is why um, we sometimes sometimes tend to um, say that 
parang lasang um, ipis. Like it's because of the smell and taste of the ipis that we have is somehow related of that one. Um, there is this specific um, neural function that is activated to our brain that we tend to taste even though we, ha we haven't tasted something yet. But by smelling an organism or a thing, minsan sasabing lasang lasang ipis. It's because of um, the functions of the brain is responsible. It's the same with the yung receptor ng taste at saka receptor ng smell are the same. Next is synesthesia. About 4% of the population regularly has a crossover of sensory experience where they see sounds or hear colors. This is no synesthesia. These are people um, or 4% of the population tries to um, see sounds even that what they nakakita sila ng sounds and they hear colors. Yung parang um, that's an activity uh, and there's a lot of kind of synesthesia. Okay, there's a lot of types of synesthesia. You may want to google it. Okay, synesthesia occurs when the senses get mixed up and don't stay separate. So this is how it looks like. We all that this image is a combination of black only. However, with people with synesthesia, they are tend to see other colors or other information that is not um, visible on that image. Okay? Synesthesia occurs when the senses get mixed up and don't stay separate, and sometimes synesthesia happens when you take drugs. However, there are research that um, synesthesia is innate. Um, drug has no responsible that is for a person who has a synesthesia. It involves only six senses but many sensations such as cognitive and there's a lot of kind of synesthesia. That's what I was saying earlier. Okay, so that is the end of our list. So on for um, perception and hope you learned something. And if you have questions, may ask me during synchronous class or asynchronous. And please answer the activity on your module. Thank you for listening.